Last year, I accompanied Jason of Primal Outdoors on an overland adventure traveling a route he developed. Starting from the city of Bend, we traversed Oregon's high desert via dirt roads across public lands, checking out points of interest along the way and ending our week-long expedition at the iconic Alvord Desert. It's a year later. The rigs look a little different, but unchanged is our desire to further explore the empty expanses of Eastern Oregon. So we are picking up where we left off on a mission to extend the route beyond the Alvord with a new week-long segment that gravitates around the stark and spectacular Owyhee Canyon. Now this trip is very much uh, an exploratory sort of developing the route kind of trip. We're going into an area that we've both been into a little bit before, but neither of us have explored really in depth. We're setting off across the backcountry with a tentative and theoretical route planned, but the purpose of this trip is to find out if we can actually get through on these roads, assess any technical challenges, and see what points of interest we can discover along the way. As it happens, we've already encountered our first obstacle, just as we're exiting the Alvord Playa. This is still essentially old lake bed mud, which can be extremely treacherous, but the soil here is pretty rocky and the base feels reasonably solid. While it's a little slippery in places, the truck is not bogging down in mud, and seeing Jason's van push through ahead of me is reassuring. Personally, I would never attempt such an extensive water crossing by myself, and on the longest stretches, I'm waiting until Jason is successfully through before I enter myself. Jason has actually been on this road before on an unrelated trip uh, when it was wet like that, and he got through just fine. So we weren't super, super concerned, but uh, you never really, really know when you're dealing with uh, lake bed mud. Thanks to Grizzlies for keeping me supplied with snacks on this trip. desert areas in the southeast corner of Oregon is just how truly remote and empty it is. There's just nothing out here. There's nobody out here. I don't even think they run cattle out here. This, Thanks, this, I would be curious to go up that road to the left. I'm wondering if there would be a campsite up there with a pretty rapid view of the Alvord and the uh, Steams. All right, pardon the little interruption there, but that's part of what we're doing. We're checking out what we find along the way. This could turn out to be a good campsite, or an interesting viewpoint, uh, or possibly a different, more interesting route, or maybe nothing, but uh, we'll check it out. Sometimes it amazes me that these little roads even exist through here. I mean, like, why is this road even here? The horses, the blue pile. <laughs>
takes us across this other little playa. It is really wet and muddy. There's tire tracks. I don't know about this. Well, I've always lived in fear of lake bed mud. I mean, there's just countless horror stories of people getting stuck in lake bed mud. And I've always been very, very wary. This feels remarkably solid. This could potentially be an issue for this route, depending on what time of year someone did it. Oh my gosh, that much water? I have to admit, I never would have dared try that. Never would have dared try that out here by myself. If I came out here and saw this playa and saw that water going across there, I'd be like, nope. Finding another way around. So ultimately driving through those uh, wet areas of that playa was not a problem at all. As it turns out, Jason actually has driven across this particular lake bed before, maybe about a year and a half ago. And there was quite a bit of water out here when he did it and um, he had no issue. And it's funny, the uh, those wet spots on this uh, lake bed mud were felt much more solid than even the mud puddles that we were driving through on the road just a little bit ago where uh, the, it was much squishier and my wheels were spinning much more and the truck was wanting to go sideways. So um, I felt a little nervous about driving across this, but ultimately it's, uh, it seems like it's just fine. I would still always exercise caution when driving through mud on a lake bed and um, you know, it's a good idea to do this kind of trip with at least one other vehicle. The road literally dumps onto this playa, then picks back up on the other side, but it's a little tricky to locate the road again. Are you sure this isn't it right here? There's tire tracks. It may be. Yeah, this is it. I recognize it. Yeah, this is where that water was that I drove through last year. So the exit from that little lake is a little tricky to find. Uh, we had to go back and forth a couple of times, but we finally found the way out. The road does come directly out of that little playa. Well, we got kind of a late start today. We still want to try and get to a logical first campsite for this leg of the trip. Over the course of this entire week, Jason and I will be overlapping a few areas we've each explored a bit before on our own. I drove this stretch of road through this beautiful grassland a year and a half ago on my first Eastern Oregon adventure. That little road to your right there is where I went up to camp that night. I couldn't find you guys. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's nice and grassy up there. That's cool. We do have one short little segment on the highway. Um, we're on BLM land, it's all BLM land over there. There's just no road that went right up in the right spot. So we just have to do about, I think it's about two miles on the highway and then we'll get back off uh, onto dirt. You know how you sometimes get stuck behind some guy who's left his turn signal on. I think this is it. Yeah, that happens to me too all the time. In fact, I miss turns a lot because of that. Winterland, tell me all your secrets. Fill me in on your wildest moments. Color trees, your yellow leaves move me. Funny, it even smells different than the sagebrush desert. When you're going out through the sagebrush, there's this strong sage sort of smell. And here, it's, it almost smells like being in a hay barn. It's a definite grassy scent. 
We were both expecting this leg of today's journey to be taking us through typical sagebrush desert, but this prairie just keeps going on and on over rolling hills. The golden grasses, illuminated by the late afternoon sun, strike an enchanting contrast to the perfect blue sky and fluffy clouds above. sort of endless rolling hills of desert, which is now sort of a mix of grass and sagebrush, and this gnarly little trail with lots of mud holes, you would never guess, you would never guess what you're about to come to. Just no indication at all. My wide-angle GoPro tends to flatten out the roads and the rocks, but this little road down into the canyon is steep, and if the rocks were any bigger, I wouldn't even be able to drive it. As it is, I've lost count of how often I've scraped the bottom of the truck. We have to pick our lines carefully. We're hoping to make camp down this dead-end spur, and I can't help worrying a bit about climbing back out of here in the morning. Oh, I can make it. I just wanted to look at it to make sure I could come back up it. I think it's fine. So that was a gnarly drive down. Um, we are going to pause here where we found a spot where we can turn around if we want to and see what uh, what's a little further up the road because uh, what we don't want to do is get down in here and find that uh, we're in a spot that we can't get past and can't turn around and definitely can't go backwards up the kind of stuff that we just drove down. So uh, we're just going to stop here, uh, walk on down and see what's down there. It's a dead end road. We know it's a dead end road. We had no plans of going beyond the end of this road, but we were kind of hoping to get down there. But now that we've seen how gnarly it is, uh, we, uh, we're going to err on the side of caution and, and check it out on foot first. Yeah, see, that's a whole new thing in my head now, yeah. that, you know, experience that I've had. Ultimately, we've opted to just camp here where we've got a flat spot and the road out in the morning is a known quantity. We don't quite have a view of the canyon from here, but it's already dark anyway. What are you doing? Um, my... Propex heater has an exhaust and a intake here, and one of my van build issues 
is is that I've got to figure out a better way to route these pipes because they get caught up with mud and so I'm basically they're full of mud right now so I, I have a couple of little pipe clamps that go around them I'm loosening those up so that I can just hang them down and then I can knock the mud out of them before I start the heater tonight Well, I was really, really planning on making a nice dinner tonight because it's early in the trip and uh, as the days go on, I tend to get less and less motivation to cook, but it was a long, grueling day. I'm actually just going to throw something really simple together tonight. Uh, so we got into camp late. We're not gonna make a fire or anything like that. So we're just gonna get some food, go to bed, and then deal with getting back out of here in the morning. Good night. Good morning. Well, my devices say it's uh, a little after seven o'clock, but uh, the truck clock says it's a little after six o'clock. Um, so apparently we've crossed into the next time zone. That means the sun is gonna come up an hour later <laughs> than it did yesterday, which already seemed late yesterday. Uh, there is not a hint of light on the horizon. So um, tomorrow morning, I think I'll sleep a little later. Also, it definitely clouded up on us last night, uh, so that is not helping uh, bring any light into the morning sky. Having the Jackery 1500 right here in the back of the truck has been super, super useful. In addition to managing, keeping my devices charged uh, each evening in camp, uh, now I'm running my electric blanket off of it. And uh, yeah, I took about another 10%, well, maybe about, started at 85, 71. So I took another 14% off of the Jackery 1500 last night, running the electric blanket for a couple of hours. And I was also charging some batteries. So um, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Even though he's got bigger tires and more ground clearance than I do, I think this may actually be harder in that van because it's so big, it's so heavy.
wouldn't recommend this trail unless you're lifted and you got tires and you've got uh, experience and confidence and I would say someone with you just in case. you but it didn't seem as bad it looked more intimidating going down to me it seems like going uphill is easier in some ways because you can see you can see exactly what you're what you're hitting whereas when you're going downhill there's like you're, you're blind to a certain extent you can't see what's below when there's big uh, rock steps like that you can't see what's below them and uh, they can feel a little bit more intimidating of course going down you're not fighting gravity so in one way that makes it easier and going up the hill this morning, uh, especially with a little mud on the tires, um, it made it, you know, that adds a, you're fighting gravity. After we drove back up to the top of the canyon room this morning, we decided to go check out this one other little spur we had noticed where we thought there may be a campsite overlooking the canyon. And uh, indeed, it uh, was a pretty nice spot. <laughs> we kind of wish we'd just camped up here last night. Can't touch the bottom. Sit into a tumble Waves that shake me out Out of my skin I've been down at the bottom of this canyon very near here, but coming at it from the east side. Viewed from below or above, my cameras are simply unable to do justice to the scale and grandeur of this breathtaking scenery. My bearings have me south of home I've been wrong before. We are now going to work our way north along the west side of the canyon towards the tiny town of Rome and one of our very few opportunities to refuel. Stay tuned for the next episode in this series, coming soon. At first I was hesitant. Now it seems oh so good.